Okay, so this morning we are going to begin working on this skill, um, finding the volume of, for example, these two popcorn boxes. The question says, how can you determine which box can hold more popcorn? Every single time we think of volume, we need to understand that volume is the amount that a box can hold, because we are always working in fifth grade with rectangular prisms. Um, so let's get started. In this lesson, you will learn how to compute volume by multiplying the area of the base times the height. Now, base, you should always think of as the bottom. It's the bottom of the box. If we know how much the bottom of the box is or what the area of the bottom of the box is, we can multiply that by the height to figure out the volume. Okay, so volume is the number of cubic units needed to fill the space inside a three-dimensional figure. Now, when they talk about three dimensions, they're talking about the length. Think about that refrigerator that I talked to you guys about before. The length goes from the front of the refrigerator to the back. So this would be the length times the width how wide the refrigerator is from front, from side to side in the front. If you're standing in front of it, this would be the width. And then the height would be how tall the refrigerator is from top to bottom. The width times the length times the height. Okay, now please excuse my writing. I'm not really good at writing with these, with the mouse, but I think I'll get better. So if we have a box like this, again, think of this as a refrigerator. Our width is always going to be, oh, where did it go? Our width is always going to be the front of it, looking at it this way. That's our first dimension, the width, our length, from front to back, and then our height from top to bottom, how tall it is, okay? All right, so if we know the dimensions of our box, we can multiply the length times the width times the height and figure out the volume. Okay, here they show us that the height is six units. And the bottom is going to be the same as whatever is on top here. If I count how many boxes there are on the top of the box or the bottom of the box, because they're the same, the bottom of the box and the top of the box have the same number of little unit cubes. If I know that the area of this base is 12 units squared, because area is always squared, it's two dimensions, length times width, the area of this space right here is always going to be three times four. So four is my length times three, which is my width. Here's my length, one, two, three, four. Here's my width, one, two, three. The area is 12 square units. That's the area of the top or the bottom. Okay, now to find the volume, I'm basically doing 12 12 for the bottom layer, 12 for the second layer, 12 for the third layer, and so on. The height is going to be 6, so to find the volume of the whole thing, I'm going to do 12 times 6. Okay, and they just basically showed us that again. Okay, so here we go. I like when they write base times height, but really, technically, it's not just base times height. It's the area of the base, area of the base, times the height. 
this little dot means multiply. You could think of it as a multiplication symbol. So here is the picture of the base times the height, the length times the width would give us the area of the base. Four is our length right here times three is our width. The area of the base is 12 times the height, which is six. And that would give us 72 cubic units. Cubic units means because there are three dimensions. If you just write 72 units, that's incorrect. You have to say cubic units. Now units could be um, inches, centimeters, meters, yards, any kind of unit of measure. Right now they're not telling us a specific unit of measure, so we just say units. Okay. Let's try one more problem. Here's another box. I can label this as, and I like this one because it shows us the, um, it shows us the different unit. It shows us that there are eight inches in the width, four inches in the length, and six inches in the height. Whenever you get a diagram like this, that's the first thing you should do is label. Now, I like this picture because you're going to see it fill in the base. Watch as the base is filled in. There's my eight inches for my width. There's my four inches for my length. Now, if I multiply eight times four, I'm going to get 32. There's 32 uh, inches cube, uh, square inches on the bottom of this box. 22 squ 32 square inches on the bottom of this box. 32 again, 32 again, 32 six times until the box is filled up. Here we're going to use our formula. 8 times 4, which is the base, which will give us 32. 32 times 6, which will give us 192 inches cubed. This little 3 right here represents the three dimensions, length times width times height. And since we were working with inches squared, with inches uh, as our unit, um, that's why our answer is in inches. Okay. The last time for the previous problem, we were working with cubic units or just plain old units. They didn't specify what kind of units. So I hope this helps, guys. I'm going to try to see if I can create more videos like this. And um, let me know if you need any help. Um, and there's a couple of videos on YouTube also that also help. I'll try to link them in this lesson as well. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.